welcome to another episode of GM Talks. Today we're gonna learn something deeply. We're gonna understand the bad bishop in the French and we're gonna use a high level game to get this understanding. And first we're gonna take a little detour so we understand what is the nature of this problem with this bishop? Because if you understand this, then you understand what to do with black in the French and what to do with white against the French. If you're able to do it, that's a completely different question. But let's get into this. Uh, and we start with, with e4. That is the way to the French. And usually the French is, of course, e6 here. But instead, we're gonna I'm going to show you something, a little detour here. Uh, we're going to do something like this. This is a very modern line. Um, and here e5 is popular. And I played this a few times in Blitz. And where black plays something like um, like like this, um, and and this position is a uh, French. And I believe when I was uh, growing up, everybody believed this to be much better for black already. You got a uh, French uh, with uh, without the white squared bishop. Um, it turns out this is not that good. Uh, and you actually miss the white squared bishop. Usually the white squared bishop would be sitting here, uh, meaning that it covers the white squares. That is, it for instance covers this one. Oops. And, um, and will make you able to play something like uh, this move. Uh, but if you play this move now, then everything white will become weaker and so on. So not having the white squared bishop is not that great, but also having it is also a problem. So what is the problem with the French actually? Well, the problem is basically that you have less space. And um, one of the things we have learned uh, over the years is that space is much more important than we thought. Uh, and usually the reason why we have, it took so long to learn this is that it's can be hard to, to play against a uh, known counterplay with, with for instance, in white against uh, an opening like the French, where black knows his tactical themes, he knows how to get counterplay and so on. Uh, so you, he does not feel the space uh, disadvantage so much. But recently, uh, people have started to understand that a space advantage is is a much more serious issue uh, than we used to think. We also see that the caro can, uh, the advanced variation in the caro can is clearly the uh, the most critical line okay let's back to the game it's Caruana versus magnus carlsen and we have a normal french Caruana usually plays uh, an ic3 which is the ambitious move in this position here we have uh, the vienna uh, vienna we have the rubenstein and we have uh, the classical knight f6 variation. Here black can play bishop d5, white can play bishop d5. But we recently saw that Carlsen <laughs> plays this gambit and that's not so bad actually. So that was, that was by the way, a pretty cool gambit. We, uh, we've already seen that. Um, so let's see this instead. e5 is what Karana does, f4. So the basic feature of the situation is that white has more space. He's got this pawn here, uh, and uh, and that is is taking away squares on Black's uh, position. So Black has less space, uh, and we can see we ha he has a lot of pieces. But and this is what the French uh, players really like: the Black position is very compact, uh, and it also contains a lot of uh, opportunities for counter play so and, and black knows how to get counter play uh, usually something with this and maybe this move and and trying to attack white's uh, center and uh, disturb white's pieces if you look at uh, white's position you say that, yes we have more space but we also have some uh, some weaknesses because the pawn has advanced which is of course the backside to a space advantage is that sometimes in order to get the spains you have to move your pawn forward making them the squares behind them weaker Okay, so c5, So and white is not able to cover this with the pawn, but it's not so bad to, to get a knight in the center um, or even a bishop. 
this is all main line theory a6 is one of the main lines uh, i think uh, i think meyer has had some success with bishop e7 the thing you should be uh, a little bit wary about here is that this guy down here is potentially bad in a lot of ways because it does not really have an easy place to get out so usually you have to wait for it but at the same time it holds black's position together which is the important thing of the bad bishop is that it protects good pawns uh, so that's that's usually the role of bad bishop is protecting good pawns and this is also what it does here and and it can wait and and the french players they're born optimists they believe this french bishop will always get out it's just a temporary problem but of course if you play against a very strong player like uh, Caruana maybe it won't get out and if it doesn't get out and white keep his grip he's better against the French so black has to and this is something with when, when French players have played the French for a long time they get lazy so they forget that they are actually at a strategic disadvantage and have to play actively if they just move around like uh, like okay my position is good it's a typical French then they, they end up worse the only reason why the French is playable is because you get counter play a6 normal move black is preparing to gain some space back on the queen side and also uh, if white would probably like to castle queen side then he will think twice when the pawns get rolling into his face here comes an interesting move knight e2 so the knight was was uh, blocking the pawn here that would like to to, to defend uh, the central pawn and it was not doing much uh, it could not go to any squares uh, really uh, so black fortifies uh, d4 and get ready to play c3 standard move in this position queen b6 um, attacking b2 you probably have to cover it here because um, for instance in in another situation, if the knight was here and the pawn was here you could play uh, you could play a3 and he cannot take due to knight a4 and and the, the queen is lost queen c1 that's not the best uh, the move you want to play but at the same time you can say that black played a6 to play b5 and now his queen is in the way b c b7 c3 uh, covering everything and we notice that the queen from here covers both here and here castle and but how to get out now uh, well in general you would of course love to have this bishop here because there's often a lot of attacking potential uh, on, on this diagonal. It's not easy to accomplish that in this uh, situation without allowing serious counterplay. So instead, uh, white just go for a more uh, si simple approach, g3, um, just getting ready to play maybe here, maybe here, not really clear. Black goes for the counterplay, and here, if he, if White plays something like this, I'm sure you just take and sacrifice the pawn uh, and trying to to get because you can take back. So it doesn't really Bishop a3 does not look good, and uh, and and also this pressure down here is is a problem. So Bishop g2 makes a lot of sense, covering the knight here. C takes, C takes and check and why black is is understanding that his position needs action uh, so he he tries to play uh, actively um knight c3 knight b6 and that's an interesting move because again uh, the b5 move is not coming the knight is clearly heading for what for this square or this square and by the way this move was definitely uh built on a miscalculation so let's see what it was uh, white plays here a move you you sometimes play sometimes you don't want to play but it it doesn't change the nature of the problem with the bishop on c8 so white takes uh, the, the the pawn on f6 and and after this he goes b3 keeping the knight out now this is something that probably made uh, carlson think that he would get very serious counterplay against this guy here unfortunately for him that's not the case 
uh, bishop d7. By the way, we can see this bishop is not that great. Uh, it, it also cannot go to the, the... You cannot be without it because then the e-pawn is very weak, but it's not very... It just makes it clumsy. But anyway, Black's intention is clearly this move followed by this move. And... Uh, and and here, and here, I, I'm sure that Carlsen had miscalculated this position. I'm sure that he thought that he could play knight d4, uh, and and that's the reason why he uh, he went for this position. Um, but the problem is 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 this is that if your queen takes here, then you lose a piece with this move, and if the rook takes, then we got b4 hitting here, hitting here. And the queen is is captured, uh, is 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 protected. So black loses a piece in this situation. So this, I'm sure this was uh, Carson's uh, miscalculation. Instead, he has to regroup. Bishop e7. But you could say you could say that the black squares here are a little bit weak, and this is a strong bishop. Um, here comes another thing. Okay, so so black is is preparing to have some counterplay here. White's long-term prospects are on the king side. His long-term prospects are the king side, but at the moment uh, it's not uh, possible to attack. Uh, you would like to 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 get to 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 to, and especially to to that guy down here, but it's not possible at the moment. So instead, we go for the ending. Now, what can we say about the structure? We can say that the structure says that this pawn is 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 alone. It's weak. It's not isolated because it's blocked so it's sort of shielded from attacks from the front which is the good thing about isolated pawns in this situation um, black also has an, an, an isolated pawn here uh, and if that goes then this would be isolated uh, so he does have some structural uh, deficiency so it's it's a little bit annoying for him he takes here bishop takes and also, white does have uh, uh, more access to this square. This knight is 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 totally dominated by the the pawn, so it has to go somewhere else. It would love to be on what square? Dear God, let me there or maybe there, right? So, but I will take something like this here and here. This guy here is uh, is the real problem. So we make that or orange. This is really the real problem. It has to cover this pawn. So it cannot go anywhere and it doesn't do anything. And it's also just sitting there. So at some point, knight e5 will come. The knight will come to e5 and, uh, and so on. Back plays uh, a natural move here. Rook c7. Um, Preparing and saying, okay, the, the whole C file is where the, the battle will take place. I have taken care of, uh, of, 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 um, of, of the black squares here, so, so I'm, I'm fine. Um, that is a smart move. The threat it carries due to, to this pin is, we're going to make that orange then, is this move or attacking here. And uh, of course, also attacking the, the the rook. So the pin is very annoying, which means that you have to do something. So 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 black moves and uh, protects the pawn. So now the bishop is just hanging. You just take it because this one is protected. Unfortunately, white has another way to go, and that is f5, unleashing all the power of the white position and creating uh, the thread here uh, so that one has to defend something black plays this move natural move also making the square for this was one of black's idea all along to get some counterplay uh, where it can go here and go here but white just says, okay, I'm still interested in the queen side, uh, king side, and uh, this guy needs to, to, to enter the game. Um, maybe here uh, we have some, some struggle on e6 and, and so on. Uh, and this bishop is still a bit clumsy here, right? Uh, and we take and take and take. 
and get to attack the bishop. And we see that we have now, it's, it doesn't look that bad for black. He does have, uh, have a bad knight, but it, it does cover a pawn. It's a bad bishop, um, and, uh, and because th this pawn is, is on, on, bla on black. And he has some problems on the white squares. White has a lot of attacking potential here on the, on the king side. So he might have some trouble, but he does have the C file. And, um, and the knight is attacking here. So it doesn't look that bad, but it, it's not really good either. And white plays it perfectly here. He says, My, I have to play for an attack. I cannot uh, sit around uh, in this situation. I have to, to go forward uh, as hard as I can in this situation. Um, so he's, he's opening up for, uh, for this one, he's opening up for this one, and he's maybe preparing this move, uh, and black is in some sort of trouble. Uh, also, this one is hanging in, in all the lines. G6. Car and d4, and it's running out of squares already, uh, and has to go here, so he has to sacrifice a pawn. By the way, is, I'm not sure g4 and a3 are the best. I think here he has to, he should take just uh, and try to to play for an attack. Anyway, yeah, 96 maybe. This is all very interesting. White is of course better here, but he's won a pawn and black's king is in trouble. But black did get rid of the, the bad bishop and if he survives, he might get to attack these guys here. So if this is not too dangerous. By the way, uh, I think uh, Karana plays this phase of the game really, really well. Um, here, uh, he. Carlsen misses uh, White's idea, so he plays this move. Looks extremely normal uh, or, or natural. He's, he's got everything covered and he's going on a hunt for the pawns. And he, after that, he will get that one. So, and then it will be funny because, well, of course, uh, this, this guy has to survive, and Black has, White has a nice move here, knight d7. So, what's the point of this? Well, basically, Black White needs to, to get get this square going, so you need this one. And also, this square is very interesting because it's very close to the king. Takes and take, take, and rook e5, undermining the knight. Please notice this is a very typical trick. You can't play this move due to this move here. And uh, this check picks up the queen, the, the rook again, uh, winning the game. So. Uh, that's not possible. The knight has to go. Knight c3. And here, after knight f6, Carlsen actually resigned. Now that's that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit strange, isn't it? Um, I thought I thought to be honest that was a little bit strange. Um, thing is, I think after this move, uh, I don't know I, I, what what he missed, but I think the, the best move is actually go back. And then uh, after this move, play d5, uh, getting ready for, for a knight here and rook here. So what you're trying to do here is to play, um, for instance, let's say let's say it just takes here. Then you probably play something like uh, like this and d6, and followed by this, and, and black is totally busted here. Um, the d pawn will queen, or the black king will get mated. Uh, so that's uh, that's totally winning. Uh, instead, you can also say something like after king f7, knight d7, king d8, uh, d5. You also play something like this, trying to defend something. And here, and after this move, you just play d6 because you cannot take it due to this move. And again, the rook and knight are coming in, uh, aided by the d-pawn and, and so on. And black is, by something like, like this, is just hopeless. Uh, double check and here you just go d7 and rook e8 and uh, black is lost so uh, so it makes sense that he resigned there it was just maybe a little bit confusing for the the, uh, the the people watching the game anyway i thought this was a very instructive game we saw that black tried to get counterplay it didn't quite succeed uh, then they exchanged queens it looked like black had 
decent counterplay with the C file, but his dark squared bishop, white squared bishop, still turned out to be a, a weakness in the ending. And and after uh, sort of a skirmish in the center, white was able uh, to to launch and uh, launch. So uh, launch uh, an attack on on Black's king uh, combined with with the uh, with the very active rook and knight, um, and this is the kind of game you can lose with uh, with Black and the French, uh, which actually quite naturally because it's it's not so easy for Black to to get out of this, especially if, if Black is a, is a little bit careless and and not uh, afraid of uh, like having the bad bishop. Uh, thinking that okay, it's always going to get out because when I was growing up and playing with a lot of tricks and, and know my lines, then this bishop would always end up being a good bishop at some point. But sometimes when you play against a really strong player, uh, the bad bishop on c8 will remain a problem the whole game and you will suffer and you will lose. Even if you're a Magnus Carlsen, uh, then this this problem is some, not something you can overcome with with uh, pure talent. And I, like I said before, the problem with the bad bishop is not that it's bad, its problem is that you lack space. And uh, if you don't have the bad bishop, then you will still lack space. Uh, but but you could somehow, sometimes you can get enough counterplay on the queen side to, to make it worthwhile. Anyway, if you like this uh, video, uh, I think you should share it. You should also sign up for the newsletter. You could also like it or comment uh, or, or send me uh, uh, some feedback. Uh, that would be a be very nice. Uh, this was GM Talks with another video uh, about, well, positional chess, I will say. Um <laughs>